In this video, we're going to look at learning objective two and three. So first, explain when it's appropriate to recognize revenue at a single point in time, and then when it's appropriate to recognize revenue over a period of time. When to recognize revenue at a single point of time. This is, I think, what we're most familiar with. This is when the contract has a single performance obligation and it is satisfied at a single point in time when goods or services are transferred to the customer. So in my Subway sandwich example, uh, you don't get possession of the sandwich until you pay for the sandwich. But once you have physical possession, you have the risks and rewards of ownership. The reward, reward is eating the sandwich. The risk is if you leave it out uh, overnight, no refrigerated, uh, the mayonnaise might not be quite fresh the next morning. What we have to decide is whether control is transferred to the customer because it, until control of the, of the goods or services has passed to the customer, revenue cannot be recognized. And so there are a number of indicators we can look at. We see, does the customer have an obligation to pay the seller, which would typically exist if goods or services have been delivered? Does the customer have legal title? Does the customer have, if, if the customer doesn't have legal title, for example, let's say there's a long-term rental, what we call a lease, do they have physical possession of the asset? Have they assumed risks and rewards of ownership? Have they accepted the asset. So these are all indicators. They don't have to, we don't have to meet all of them, but we look for at least some of them. You know, in a lot of examples we see the product is delivered and the customer has an obligation to pay within a certain number of days. The seller can book the revenue because the customer has control even though the customer has not yet made payment. And that's the whole basis of our recognizing revenue and setting up an account receivable. A bit more complicated is when it's not appropriate to recognize revenue at a single point in time, but rather over a period of time. So that's learn our learning objective three. So when do we recognize revenue over a period of time? Well, services may be performed over a period of time. Um, some products, such as those that result from long-term construction projects, are completed over an extended period. We'll actually look at long-term construction project as a distinct uh, unit in this chapter. Generally, then, companies recognize revenue as the service or product is being provided. For example, a PR firm might be engaged to do a three-year campaign and would then provide their PR services over the three years. It doesn't really make sense to require no revenue be recognized until the end of the contract when the engagement is complete because services are being provided on an ongoing basis. So we say the revenue should be recognized over the three-year period. So here's some examples of when revenue is recognized over time. It's recognized over time if the customer consumes the benefit of a seller's work as it's performed. So, for example, two-year gym rep uh, memberships are recognized as revenue over the two years of the contract. It's uh, if the customer controls the asset as it is created. For example, a contractor builds an extension onto a customer's existing building. Uh, then, since the customer essentially is controlling the extension, the contractor could recognize revenue as they're completing the contract or the seller is creating an asset that has no alternative use to the seller, and the seller has the legal right to receive payment for progress to date. For example, if a company manufactures an ocean-going freighter for a shipping contact com company, there is a contract There is a, for the shipping company to buy the freighter. They're not building it on spec, and we'll see that the seller has the right to recognize revenue over the construction period. Usually revenue is recognized in proportion to the amount of performance obligation that's been satisfied. So if the gym has provided a month of service under a 24-month contract, then 1 24th of the membership fee can be recognized as revenue. 
um, if the payment was made up front, it's, a, it's initially booked as a liability. It's deferred or unearned revenue. But then over time, as the membership uh, access to the gym is provided, the revenue is recognized. If not, what if none of these three criteria are met? If none of the three criteria are met, the customer is can't consume the benefit of the seller's work, you know, until it's it's completed. Uh, the customer lacks control, uh, or there it doesn't meet a, this distinctive contract, what we call a long-term construction contract. Then revenue cannot be recognized until the performance obligation is completely satisfied, which is usually at the end of the contract. If the time to completion is relatively short, then a company might not even bother recognizing revenue over time, even if it were allowed to do so. For example, a lab running lab tests might take several days to complete a, a test and transmit the results to the physician, but it doesn't make sense to allocate the lab fee over, say, three days of analysis, and so probably the revenue would be recognized at a single point in time. Let's, let's, however, look at an example, review uh, timing of revenue recognition. So this is Varga Services. Varga Tech signed a $6,000 consulting contract with Schaefer Holdings. Contract requires Varga to provide computer technology support services whenever requested over the period May 1, 2018 to April 30, 2019, and Schaefer pays the entire $6,000 up front May 1, 2018. And the question is, how much revenue should Varga recognize in 2018? So they're getting $6,000 for a 12-month contract. And in 2018, if you count the, the months, if we go from um, May 1st to uh, December 31st, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, what you'll find is it's been, the contract is outstanding, eight months. And so they would recognize eight twelfths of the revenue in the current, in the current year. Now the journal entries are, are not required, but 5118, Varga would get the cash in, and we're going to assume they do things the, the conceptually correct way, they would record a liability for the deferred revenue. And then assuming that they only do an adjusting journal entry at year end at 1231.18, at that point they would reduce the balance in the deferred revenue account and recognize this was like service revenue for the eight months of revenue that they have earned. So that's really what we saw in Chapter 2. We're just now putting it in the context of the requirements for revenue recognition. And so this concludes our look at our learning objectives 2 and 3.